everyone. Uh, welcome to our Heavenly Parent Holy Community Oceania Hundoke on this Unshield Day with uh, Reverend Kenichi Ito. Today being Wednesday the 17th of March or the 5th of February in the ninth year of Chongyil Guk. So let's uh, begin by offering a bow to our Heavenly Parents and True Parents. And uh, let's offer our family pledge in both Korean and English. Thank you. Kajun men se e Johnny Cook Chuin Uri Kajogan Cham Sarang Uri Chun Shimago Hanil Pumonim Gua Cham Pumonim Uri Moshio Tonjue de Pioto Kajon e Temio Chun Shim to Kajon e Teo Kajon es no Hyoja Kuka es no Chun Shin Segesen Soin, Tonju Esen, Sonjae Kajome Doril, one so high costly, men say Hanaida. Family pledge number two. Our family, the owner of Tongil Guk, pledges to represent and become central to heaven and earth by attending the heavenly parent and true parents. We pledge to perfect the dutiful family way of filial sons and daughters in our family, patriots in our nation, saints in the world and divine sons and daughters in heaven and earth by centering on true love. Okay, good morning, our heavenly parents and our true parents. We're very grateful to be able to come together uh, to share this time, uh, you know, this precious time in the morning together as a community, uh, as all of Oceania, and that today is a, the Unshield Day and we're honored to be able to have Reverend Ito come and share with us. We want to be able to open our hearts and minds to receive your words, to receive the power and spirit of our true mother and to really invest ourselves completely. We know that you have longed for this moment to come in history where we at the precipice of really fulfilling your will. You know, soon North and South Korea will be united as one nation again after so many years being separated, but that is the final you know, battle between God and Satan. And then once that battle is completed, uh, the world will dramatically change. You know, Korea will be able to stand as a, uh, a, a very influential nation, you know, uh, becoming a nation that will you know, even lead the world. So we ask that you know, your guidance be with us and that this providence can fulfill the way that you intended and, with, and it doesn't get any you know, delayed any longer because of our ignorance and, and small mindedness. So we want to pray that, you know, being here together, we can you know, make the conditions necessary for victory. So thank you, Father, for your guidance. And we offer you this in our collective names and in our names, John and Shizuan and me is a blessed central family. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I'll just shop staring. Okay, so welcome everyone. We've got you know, 42 of us connected at the moment and uh, Reverend Ito is you know, eager to present to us. So let's give him a good welcome. So. Good morning, everybody. Uh, brothers, sisters around uh, Oceania. I'm very happy to share with you this morning. Uh, we, every day we are happy time with Reverend Itaka Yamada who share True Parents Life course, uh, very vividly and the detail. So really we are exciting to hear uh, his lecture every day. Uh, sorry, this morning, just me, not Reverend Yutaka, but uh, I share with you my own way. And uh, this time, uh, how God relate to Oceania Pacific Island nation. And uh, just, you know, uh, through the True Father's speech, from uh, his uh, uh, autobiography. <coughs> Happiness is a life lived for others. As a peace-loving global citizen, uh, 3039 through 3042 pages. And uh, now I share with you uh, Father's speech. Children are born from the flesh and the blood of their parents. <coughs> Without parents, there would be no children. Yet people in this world shout out for individualism, 
as though they came into this world on their own. Only a person who receives no help whatsoever from anyone at all would have the right to speak of individualism. There is nothing in this world that comes into being for its own sake alone. All created beings are created for one another. I exist for you and you exist for me. There's no one as foolish as the selfish person who lives only for his own or her own sake. It may appear that the selfish life benefits the individual, but ultimately it is a life of self-destruction. The individual, is, individual must live for the family, the family for the people, the people for the world, and the world for God. All the schools I have founded have three mottos. The first is live a life that casts no shadows as if you were under the sun at light moon. A life without shadows is a life with a clear conscience. When we finish our life here on earth and go to the spirit world, our entire life will unfold before us as though it were being played back on videotape. Whether we go to the heaven or to hell, it's determined by how we live. So we need to live spotless, clean lives, casting not even the smallest shadow. The second motto is live shedding sweat for tear for us, tears for humanity, and the blood for heaven. There are no life in the blood, sweat, and the tears that people shed. There's only truth. There's no meaning, however, in the blood, sweat, and tears that a person shed his own sake. This great investment must be shed for the sake of others. The final motto is one family under God. There is only one God, and all human beings are brothers and sisters. Differences of language, race, and culture account for only 0.1%. As human beings, we are 99.9% .9 the same. There is a 14 island country, the South Pacific. Uh, uh, among them, the Marshall Island. I asked, when I visited Marshall Island, I asked its president. This is a beautiful island, but it must still be difficult to leave this country, isn't it? The president signed and reply, but population is just 60,000 and the land is just two meters above sea level on average. So waves just one meter high can flood much of the country. A most serious problem though is education. Children of rich families go to America or Europe to be educated and do not return. Children of poor families have no schools from which to receive good education so even the brightest child cannot be trained properly for leadership. The concern for an island country such as ours is that we are unable to raise up leaders. After hearing his lament, I established the high school of the Pacific in Kona, Hawaii for the sake of the children of the, these island countries. The school provide secondary education to children from countries throughout the Pacific and help them apply to college. We provide round trip airfare to Hawaii, tuition, board, and even computers so that they can receive the best education. We attach just one condition to receive this education. Once they finish, they must return to their countries and work in the service of their nation and its people.
Living for the sake of others requires sacrifice from time to time. Some years ago, one of our church missionaries was turning South America when the place he was visiting was hit by major earthquake. His wife came running to me with her face as white as sheet. What should I do? She asked with tears in her eyes. I'm so worried. I don't know what to do. You might be surprised by my response. Instead of patting her on the shoulder and comforting her, I shouted at her, are you worried about your husband or are you worried about how many lives he may be able to save in that disaster area? I was natural for her to be concerned for her husband's safety. But because she was the wife of missionary, her concern should have been of a higher order. Rather than pray for her husband's safety, she should have prayed that her husband could save as many lives as possible. Nothing exists for its own sake. That is not how God created the world. Man exists for the sake of woman, and a woman exists for the sake of man. Nature exists for the sake of humanity, and humanity exists for the sake of nature. All created beings in this world exist for the sake of their country, a counterpart. It is an action, action of heaven that every being lives for the sake of its partner. Happiness is possible only in a relationship with a partner. Imagine that some fellow who has lived his life as a singer goes to an uninhabited island and sing as loudly as possible. If there's no one here, there to hear him, he will not be happy. To realize that we exist for the sake of others is a great achievement that changes our lives. When we realize that our life is not ours alone, but it's mean to be, to be for the sake of the other. We begin to follow paths different from the one we were on. Just as singing to yourself will not make you happy, there's no joy without a partner. Even the smallest and the most tribal thing can bring you happiness when you do it for another. Okay, now thank you very much for hearing this to Father speech uh, regarding uh, living for the sake of others. Now, I want to share with you how God's providence landed to the uh, Pacific nations like ours. Before then, we just briefly uh, watched the history of uh, our Pacific region namely like a Micronesia region, like a Palau, FSM, and Marshall Island, and that uh, surrounding nations. Uh, the medieval age to 19th centuries, it is a Spanish occupation. Sp Spanish sailor is just hanging around. Then end of 19th centuries and uh, end of World War I, the German came, especially a businessman, and occupied such a FSM and Marshall Island. And uh, they find out in the co uh, coconut uh, business, it, we say the copra industry is a good business for them. And they cooperate together with traditional chief to start business and occupy the Marshall Island and FSM or nations. And the World War First era, 1914, 1918, and the end of the uh, war, there's a treat of Besai, 19, 19 <laughs> June 28. And uh, at the time, German is like an en enemy countries. And uh, Japan was the member of, you know, Arid countries. Uh, so after German lost the war, uh, a League of the Nation, but established that right after this uh, Treaty of Versailles, 
uh, toss the region, German region to Japan as a, a mandate territory. So Japan occupied that uh, area from Parao to Marshall Island and uh, saying as a Nanyo Gunto. Uh, this is 1920 to 1944, just uh, the end of the World War II, just uh, Japan lost the war in this area. Uh, and in 1932, Japan established Manchukuo, like uh, the one uh, Chinese nation uh, controlled by Japan. And the League of the Nation never agreed to Japan. So Japan finally withdrew from the League of the Nation. 1933. After then, Japan personalized that area and control that area, saying that you are the emperor's children, this territory is emperor's land. So they start education, just like Japan, and every school there's a picture of emperor and the greeting to the Imperial Palace and uh, etc. And finally, for God's side, try to take over. At the time, Japan come to the, you know, like a Satan side. Uh, US, after the Pearl Harbor attack, at, uh, oh, December 8, 1941, US now counter uh, attack and they come to Midway, to Japan lost many uh, carrier, and finally come to the Gilbert, Kiribati, then come to Marshall Island, and the uh, fierce battle, and uh, Japan retreat until the Micronesia, FSM, and took was the Japanese Navy base, where their Admiral Yamamoto was there, but later he shut down in Solomon Island, because Americans know all the information and then this battle come to Guam and Saipan. And uh, in Saipan, Japanese ladies and the children make a, like a suicide jump, you know, instead of surrender. Then war come to Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Finally, uh, Japan occupied, Japan was a surrender and the GHQ and uh, guided by General MacArthur. This is the end of the war. Like a uh, father's story, yeah? 1945, Korea was liberated and like a free. However, God's providence still continue because and this prepared movement like a Kim Bai Moon's uh, monastery of uh, uh, the Jerusalem and you know, couldn't unite with father. So father come to North Korea after 1946. Yeah, this uh, uh, our territory uh, is, you know, become uh, after World War II, 1946, you know, like a U United States or United Nations Trust Territory, and the Cold War era began. Soviet Union and communist countries and against uh, the free nation like United States. So USA utilize this Marshall Island and uh, like a nuclear test site. They made 67 times nuclear test. You know, I'll show you video later and uh, you see the, what is this terrible uh, nuclear test. Then 1986 finally joined United Nations membership. So this is a, you know, prehistory that, you know, God interfere and further uh, try to directly interfere our region is the inaugural conference of Federation of Island Nations for World Peace in Tokyo, June 16 to 18, 1996. At the time, uh, Caribbean nations and the Mediterranean nations and the Pacific nations, all island nations, current and former head of state gather a discussion about the role of island nation in the 21st century. Very exciting discussion 
uh, accidentally I was there from attend from Africa, uh, and I saw the Amata Kabua, where the current president from Marshall Island, he talked about the why God create ocean. The theme must be ours, and we also must make research, you know, how, why God create ocean, 70% of the world is ocean. And uh, Australian uh, former Prime Minister, Sir John Gorton, mm -hmm. and the New Zealand former Prime Minister, Michael Moore, and the Canadian former Prime Minister, Brian Mulroney, and all those dignitaries, anyway, uh, gather, and the message from uh, Edward Heath, from former Prime Minister of Great Britain, and uh, Dr. Bohi Park also attended. So this must be starting point, and our uh, leadership of Oceania gather Tokyo. Right after, uh, in Champion, there is a 40-day workshop for dispatching national messiah providence to the worldwide and the include Pacific nation. Here, uh, after 40, uh, the end of the 40 days workshop in Champion and the 71st uh, National Messiah, uh, who is a former uh, seven, 21 years missionary awarded. You know, they completed 21 years mission and uh, those people was uh, nominated as a National Messiah. Here you can see, uh, Laban uh, Tanaka here, and uh, as Australia, and Laban uh, uh, Jini Kagawa's husband, Laban Kagawa for the Banuatu, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hasegawa, who I think Fiji, and uh, Shoji Mitsuishi for Samoa, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rim for the, I think, Tonga and uh, ours for Marshall Island. Yeah, young face you can see here, yeah? uh, they dispatched to the Pacific nation. And when father came suddenly uh, to Marshall Island, October 15, 2000, you see this date, you can imagine something, this date, October 15. Yes, this is a right next day of October 14, the anniversary of father liberate from Hunnam prison. And this is the 50th anniversary. 1950, October 14, father was liberated from Hunnam prison. The Reverend Yutaka explained about very short moment when the United Nations Army uh, take over then, after they again withdraw, then North Korea and the Chinese army push back. And the 50th anniversary, the right next day, was a direct flight to Marshall Island. And here, Keze North and all his government waited airport. This scene is the father met Keze North. And as you see, the discussion and the father and the case I know, the president, you know, the Marshall Island, you see this picture, you know, no height. And the sun, and this is the flooded. And uh, really, uh, for myself, it was very scary, you know, the how to escape if tsunami came, you know, with helicopter, or I don't know what. So, and this is a, uh, after discussion, and the father determined to make a uh, high school of the Pacific. This is in Kona, Hawaii. Father visited high school of Pacific and meet the student from all over the Pacific. At the beginning, only Micronesia region, then uh, later all of Pacific nation. Uh, smart student together, and as uh, they mentioned about after the graduation and the college, they should return their own country and sub to the nation and the people. When father and uh, KZ note made top meeting in the cabin of the uh, Coast Guard board, and uh, father write 
uh, after the decision came, uh, further the calligraphy, uh, this is the Japanese, Hoshi no Seishin wa Kami no Tasuke no Motonari. The serving spirit is the basis of a heavenly parent's help, just like uh, living for the sake of others. This is a student from the Micronesia region and uh, Marshall Island. And this student, a teacher, is very smart. This is a Yale University, from Yale University, highest level education in the Pacific. Before, uh, then the highest education must be Xavier High School in Chuk. All the elite students study there and have to become a minister and the government officials. But even more than this, the high school of the Pacific is stuff very famous and everybody want to join the school. This is a scene of the the day when father uh, arrived Marshall, Marshall Island. Father made the state welcome banquet, made a speech just like a speak to the member about true love. And this is a together with the case I know. Father mentioned if head of state make mistake with some you know problem of a uh, woman, like a chapter two problem, this head of state should be stepped down. And after hearing this, KJ Nod is very freezed, you know, afraid. And the father at the time encouraged KJ Nod, are you okay? And KJ Nod said, yes, I am fine. This is a picture of this. And uh, next day, uh, government of Marshall Island prepared everything in a meeting through parents with uh, uh, ministers and the true mother together with the minister's wives. But uh, uh, true parents refuse kindly. I'm sorry, we come here to for fishing. Please allow us to go to the fishing. So from next day, uh, 17th October, they go to fishing. But absolutely father must get fish at the time. So I chosen and the best fisherman's boat uh, for export. But first day they couldn't get fish, but they landed Arno Atoll, the right next atoll of the Majro, and through pants enjoy, like you see, and uh, in the lagoon, and the true mother is very enjoyed collecting. You, you see, this is a coral stone, very shaping, very interesting. This is a final and the next day, October 18, finally father got four kind of fishes. You see this is a blue marine. And this, this is the best captain. And the father faced a very happy, he completed condition of four kind of fish in the Pacific Ocean. The immediate father returned to the hotel and declared the open up of ocean providence. Then father next day, they fly to Hawaii. This is the scene of a cabin, the top meeting, after top meeting, and uh, they shake hands. You see the, the former uh, president of region, Reverend Son, and uh, uh, Reverend Oscar come from Japan, representing, uh, anyway, the two parents uh, side and uh, our uh, organization say, so in the case I note. And after then, the father left. Uh, father said, within 40 days, you should have a first Pacific Oceania summit. So this is in November, uh, in, in Majuro, the all the 14 island nations uh, sent the representative the dignitaries, the parliament members, government officials, head of states, gather uh, and the discussion about establishing culture of peace in the Pacific region, character education, family, and global cooperation. And the uh, participant is, you see, of course, uh, host country, KZ Note, and uh, uh, President Remengeso, just 
president elected at the time uh, from Palau, and uh, Joseph de Benicia from a special participant from the Philippines, uh, and Jacob Nena of former prime minister of FSM, and uh, Painu from the former prime minister of Tuvalu, and uh, Taiwan ambassador, and uh, also the here you can see Dr. Son, Neil Albert Salonen, and Thomas Walsh. And all the Japanese missionaries surrounding nations and the national messiah from Fiji and Marshall Island and other countries. And the Marshall is also officials together. So I can uh, share this and the, at the end of this, uh, my presentation before reflection, I want to share uh, with you uh, some video of a nuclear test. And I uh, can see that. Uh, missed its intended target by nearly 800 yards. The blast sent five ships, including two destroyers, to the bottom of Bikini Lagoon. All ships within a half a mile of the blast were heavily damaged. But damage was nowhere near that created by the following underwater blast known as Shot Baker. Okay, anyway, finish this and uh, thank you very much. They did the six, seven times did such a test and the Marshall people evacuated, still cannot go back and uh, so terrible uh, situation happened. And uh, that's the reason why father come to Marshall Island and the, uh, you know, the not other country, people are suffering, uh, the many occupation, German, Japan and the final 
and uh, this is the Cold War era victim. And now Marshall Island also the, the missile test site from the lands from the Soviet Union, now North Korea. So America shut, shut down from the Kwajalein or Majiro to shut down missile yeah, to the shut down test from the mainland of the United States. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend Ito. Yes. Wow, that's uh, quite a, a video. Uh, it's quite a dramatic, uh, hard, hard to say anything uh, about that. I just want to go back to the three mottos uh, that Father, uh, there's a couple of things that you know, I was inspired by the three mottos that he said that he gave for schools, you know, to cast no shadow, you know, to have that sincere investment through, you know, sweat, you know, tears and blood and, and the thing, you know, that doing that means there's no lies and that we're one family under God, we're 99.9% .9 the same. Uh, and the other thing that uh, uh, I'm, I'm still in the process of doing as well is we exist. You know, when we realize that we exist for others, this is a, a great achievement. And uh, I, I reflecting on how deeply do I really realize that uh, we exist for others. Uh, I, I, I wonder, you know, when they were uh, testing, you know, 67 times in uh, Marshall Islands, you know, uh, did they have that thought about, you know, are they doing this for you know, everyone? I'm not sure. So yeah, it was also good to see the ex uh, Prime Minister of uh, uh, Australia and New Zealand at the meeting. Uh, yeah, for the the first meeting of the island nations. Yeah, so I'd like to open it up to who would like to share. Uh, yes, Douglas, I can see. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot to, uh, it's hard to say all this concisely, but rooted in this conflict that Reverend Ito had uh, explained taking place in the Pacific, it goes back in history, actually 400 years, the islands have suffered great conflicts um, for a long period of time, but in a meaningful providential way. Uh, it started with the um, power of Spain as a Catholic nation to be able to travel the oceans, you know, and uh, they spread Catholicism very rapidly throughout the whole world, landing in all the way in the Philippines uh, within a hundred years. And uh, this battle between Catholicism and Protestantism actually developed over a 400 year period. And it's so significant because the sovereignty of Catholic power had to be diminished and the rise of the Protestant um, uh, peoples of the world, you know, who had the Bible in their hands, you know. So this was an incredible conflict that from the time of Columbus and all the conquering done in the name of Spain, it was answered by a little tiny country called Holland. And the Dutch said, well, you know, we're a Protestant, we're a new Protestant nation, we must uh, deal with what Spain is doing. So they stood up and started building ships and so forth and doing missionary work and traveling throughout the world. And that actually inspired England to do that. And then out of that situation where Spain was conquering the whole world and claiming sovereignty, both the English and the Dutch competed with them and they fought those wars all over the Caribbean, you know, all over the world. But it's really amazing how numbers work because after 400 years of this, it was a Dutch American president who in 1898 went to war with Spain for 40 days and won all the lands that Spain had uh, in 300 years, all the way over to the Philippines. And then that started the modern world. So, 
terrible thing is that the Cold War happened and all the atomic weapons, the last 100 years has been a battle between democracy and communism. But that's an interesting piece of history explaining why the islands have suffered so much conflict and battles between the French and Catholic nations of the world all the way over to the Pacific. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Douglas. Okay. So, uh, yes, Daniela, go ahead. Yeah, it's quite amazing how um, you can see how true parents are truly like uh, have such a um, such an understanding of God's providence and such a, like they are really moving the pieces to, to complete the work of restoration. At that time, so 15th of October in Korea, we had, we were finishing the, the, the third 21 day wives workshop in Korea. And, um, so it was true father had, Actually, I remember being in Korea doing the 21 day workshop for the wife's workshop and um, which was a significant, uh, significant time. And he, he was bringing all the wives in Korea to do the 21 days according to the blessings, uh, the blessings, you know, uh, sequences. And it was um, at the time to father when he came to to give us a speech is, you know, at the third, I participated on the third wife's workshop. He came and asked us, there's a speech uh, on the inauguration of that workshop. And he says to us, um, who do you love the most, your son or your daughter? And then father went on explaining uh, about that. And then uh, he said, like at the end, he said, um, can you break down all the barriers? Can you break down all the barriers? Can you break down all the barriers? So he was really training uh, women, you know, training us sisters to obviously connect it to the Pacific, to the Oceania Providence, to really like step up, you know, spiritually um, and, and make a completely a different shift spiritually to be able to unite with true mother and take the, you know, take that role with true mother, support true mother and, and bring the, you know, the, the, the providence and the role of women to like, you know, a, another spiritual level. So it, the more we share, the more we, we understand all true, true parents' uh, movements and all they have done. We can see really like the history moving and God advancing his, um, yeah, his final dream, you know, to unite with, um, with his children. Mm. Okay, thank you, Daniela. I, I, I saw Sean there earlier. You can go ahead, Sean. And then after Mr. Rai, okay. Wanted to say, um, it's easy to ignore something if you feel uncomfortable about it, but it's important not to ignore those, those things. Uh, in the Marshall Islands, uh, Reverend Ito was saying that they dropped the uh, nuclear testing there five or six times. It's easy to ignore that because it doesn't direct us effect directly, but the tribes and the families there, the indigenous people there, I'm sure it's still affecting them even today. Here in Australia, the UK dropped 12 nuclear tests in South Australia, in Maralinga. Now, majority of Australians don't even know about this. And it's easy to ignore it because we're not directly affected by it. But the indigenous people out there still affects them today. Just something to think about, that's all. Okay. 
thought I'd just like to share that small point. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Mr. Rai, you had your hand up. Okay. Uh, thank you, Reverend Ito, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, you are, we all know, uh, respect uh, your mission in Africa more than uh, 20 years. The 1996 after uh, received the Messiah, they went to Marshall Island. And uh, uh, actually, uh, to go to big country is more easy, but uh, uh, such a small island, I think uh, maybe smaller than King Island, Douglas, I think. Uh, then his uh, chonsong and dedication to survive and encourage for all the efforts and uh, to get a wife and all children involved and welcome uh, to parents and start with Ocean Providence or the other really great. I think it's uh, uh, his uh, testimony uh, 20 or 20, I think after 1996 or so 25 years and uh, still doing and uh, it is incredible great. Uh, maybe it's just uh, Within a third minute, maybe he cannot talk or there are many more hidden stories of hard work and we truly appreciate great and thank you for your hard work. Thank you so thank much. You, Mr. Wright. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mary? Yep. Okay. I'm inspired to share something. Um, it was interesting that um, those the father went to Marshall Islands in 2000 and had that also had that conference in 2000 and that was the same year that the Olympic Games were in Australia and uh, and uh, it was two th yeah anyway um, I was in America at a meeting and they opened it up for questions so um, I true father was answering the questions and I asked the question, is it providential that the Olympic Games are in Australia in, two, <laughs> in 2000? And uh, he, said, um, he said, are you from Australia? And I said, yes. And he said, it's up to you. <laughs> so, so basically, so um, I realised that, yeah, we each have that incredible responsibility. So even though God sets up this sort of situation and it was providential that it was in Australia, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't bear fruit unless we bring the victory, you know, collectively. So, yeah, I just want to share that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mary. <coughs> Actually, we're yeah. at that uh, time now where we need to uh, uh, offer our unison prayer. So I'll just... Uh, uh, share the screen. Uh, all right. So let's uh, pray together.
adieu, adieu, adieu. Thank you, everyone. It's great to see you all and have a good day. See you Thank tomorrow. You. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 God bless. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.